Uh, good morning, lovely people. Uh, here we are. Your weekly Yoga Solutions live broadcast. You might notice I'm in a different venue today. It's, um, I'm in the thick of DIYing my, um, my bathroom and the entire flat has exploded. So um, as a result, I, um, I'm in uh, Abigail's lovely new place. She's just moved in. So there's a little bit of chaos here too, but it's um, absolutely amazing here. The light's incredible. Um, anyway, I uh, love being here. So uh, I feel quite comfortable here. So let's have a look at see what we've got today. Oh yes, before we start, I, I just um, mention um, things I've got coming up. This uh, Friday in Edinburgh is my monthly um, yoga clinic, joint clinic workshop at Santosha. Um, that's two till five, Friday afternoon. Come along if you've got any, well, come along, come along. Uh, it's great CPD for teachers, that sort of thing. But if you happen to have um, some part of your body that you would like some more freedom in or some posture that um, eludes you, the value of it eludes you, um, then come along and uh, I'm not sure how the yoga works from my perspective. Uh, it, it's always transformative for people, um, it's whether you um, want to take on the, the the relationships or not is a matter of practice but uh, but the um, the thing itself um, can be totally reinvented you know you don't have to walk around with that issue um, all that complication in your body you know so anyway that that's uh, that's this Friday I, I do one of those months uh, so it's Friday the, the 17th of November hi Claire uh, thank you for joining um, Thank you. That's very kind of you. So she's, uh, Claire just said, this is an amazing thing you're doing. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, I was I was meditating one day and, and wondering um, if you want to know the story. I, I won't spend too long on this, but um, I was uh, meditating on what do I want? What do I want to do with my work? And, uh, you know, I was, I was worrying a bit about bills and that sort of thing. And um, that that's not really where I'm at, you know. Um, the the um, the thing that I want to do is spread the work. I want I want to spread it worldwide, and um, and when when that's associated with um, uh, uh, getting bums on mats and, and taking money for it, pe people presume that it's a it's a business, <clears throat> and I don't think I'm in it for the business. So, I mean, I need to earn a living, but um, what what I want to do is I want to spread this work around the world, and I thought, well, what better way to do it than just give the best of what I have free and um, then hopefully people will benefit and those that do come and work with me hi Kishori nice to see you um, those that do come and work with me do so because they resonate with the work so um, anyway uh, yes thank you thank you Claire um, so what was I saying oh yes things coming up of uh, a uh, joint clinic a yoga clinic this Friday in Edinburgh there's uh, the 17th of November there's another one, um, I think it's the 6th of December. It's, uh, I do it pretty much once a month. The weekend before that, the, th the 2nd and 3rd is of December, there's stuff going on. The 2nd of December is um, Abigail's doing a, a, a really important uh, CPD workshop for teachers in on the Isle of Wight. It's at um, the Isle of Yoga, Erling's place. Yeah, Erling's qualified um, with us and um, he's an amazing teacher in his own right. Uh, but um, he, he wanted to um, bring Ab Abigail's expertise to the Isle of Wight for the for the local teachers and, and other people that are interested in, in um, their pregnancy health. Um, so yeah, and it's around it's around um, the um, subject of pregnancy. Uh, Abigail, Abigail, yeah. what what's the what's the subject of your um, workshop on in, at the Isle of Isle of Yoga? Um, the there's the Isle of Yoga, I've been asked to teach it because um, teachers want to incorporate um, pregnant students in their class. So it's a CPD on, if you're already teaching, you have a student that comes along and says, I'm pregnant, and um, I just give you some, some major points and ways that you can inc incorporate her safely and enjoyably in your class. There you go. Perfect. Um, and uh, yes, uh, it's, it's got to be done. Uh, Abigail's... Um, got a vast experience with these things and um, 
anyway, I won't, I won't go into it too much, but if you if you can make it and if you're interested in the subject of um, including people, uh, pregnant people in your classes, I've, I've always included pregnant people in my classes because the, 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 the yoga doesn't, uh, shouldn't contraindicate anything to do with pregnancy. But um, anyway, uh, that's on the second, Saturday the 2nd. On the 3rd of December, I'm up in Twickenham for a day workshop where it's a regular group, but um, people come in, new people come in, and it's, uh, it's a very nice vibe. Um, come along and, um, as usual, bring whatever you're interested in, and I'll make a class out of the group's requirements and, and wishes. So um, that's enough. Uh, let's get on with the... Um, uh, oh, Louis, yes, uh, uh, Louisa, it, it would be great if you could come, <laughs> do, you know, um, it sounds like you can't, but um, do pa pass it on as well, pass it on to people you think might be interested, you don't have to be a teacher to attend, um, but, um, you know, any, any, any body workers would be useful, be, be useful for, for them, and um, yes, uh, uh, Sunday in Twickenham with me. Uh, you get hold of the heart yoga for that. It's all on. The, um, it's it's um, it's not on the website yet, is it yours, Abigail? But I'll I'll, uh, I'll put it up there um, soon, so you can get information on that. Anyway, let's get on with this um, because I've got some good questions. Um, thank you, Louisa. So um, yes, I had uh, one from Louisa. Louisa Bertwell. She's one of my uh, qualified teachers. She's a long-term student. She's done at least a thousand hours with me. Um, a wonderful teacher in her own right. Um, anyway, uh, what's she saying? Opening the hips in seated half lotus using the feet, please. Okay, um, half lotus. I can include that. But I, but I've also got a, a lovely question from Claire Bradley. Um, and she wants to know: teaching gentle yoga for seniors with some limited mobility, the best way to stretch or lengthen, uh, strengthen the psoas muscle. Thank you. Okay. So, these two questions go together. The um, Claire's uh, request is kind of in keeping with preparation for Louisa's request around uh, Lotus, so we'll get straight on with that. First thing I want to say, though, is um, it's very useful. It will be very good in the yoga world if we could just um, challenge our idea around stretch and strength um, the idea of strengthening a muscle um, why would we want a muscle to be stronger uh, there's a question why would he why would we need a muscle to be stronger um, I'm hoping my my audio doesn't give out because the thing's flashing a bit let's uh, um, let's just hope it works. Oh, one second, I might have a thing here. Um, yes, question, why, why would we need to um, stretch a muscle or make it stronger? Now, why would it be inherently weak? Um, muscles do the job that you ask them to do. Okay, so if there's an idea that the psoas muscle needs to be stronger, the question is why? why? Why would it need to be stronger? If there's an idea of it needs to be stretched, the question would be, okay, so why would it need to be longer as well as stronger? Okay, it's just, a, it's, I'm just opening up the question uh, because um, the idea of strengthening and stretch um, tends to lead to exercises that are not related to function. You know, you go to a gym and you, you strengthen muscles and muscles get tight and then you stretch them because they've got tight. Um, that's not related to natural daily function. So the only time you'll, you, you'll have that activity going on is when you're in the gym. Uh, it won't be related to, you know, how you actually pick things up or, you know, anything else, not really. Um, so, Yes, so I'm challenging the idea. Uh, the, 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 the desire to stretch is about is more to do with the desire to let go of tension. And, I, and I'll show you how to let go of tension in the psoas muscle. And this is appropriate for everyone, including your seniors. Um, and it's, it's gentle, but it's intense. The, gen, the, the gentleness um, 
um, makes an intensity because uh, the thing that you're doing is creating the conditions that will allow you to let go of tension. Now, uh, it helps to know where, where the psoas muscle runs. It inserts deep inside the um, trochanters. I, th I think it's the uh, lesser trochanter in the inside of the thigh bone, near, near the hip, deep inside. And then it sort of, um, uh, is that right, Abigail? Abigail? Which which side does the psoas muscle insert in the in the trochanters? Is it inner or is it lesser or greater? Inner or outer? Yeah. Inner. It is okay. And then um, it it straps round through the um, sort of over the pelvis. It, it it doesn't actually attach the pelvis, but it goes straight back and through to the lumbar spine, sort of either side of the lumbar spine. It's sort of front and back. So the shape of the muscle is a bit like this. If you look at the screen, it, it sort of it starts deep back here, and then curves over the over the uh, pelvis, and then drops back again to sit sit alongside the lumbar spine. So the, if you want to relax the muscle, um, here's here's a radical suggestion: don't flatten your back. Because flattening your back is using the psoas muscle to hold the pelvis in a position. Quite often, not not always. You can do it from other places. But um, the action of tucking your tail under causes tension in the very muscles that you're talking you're talking about letting go of or or stretching. Um, so first things first is is try not to. Um, cause too much of an artificial flattening of the back. What you, if you want to relax the psoas muscle, you have to relax it in the shape that it is in, yeah? okay. which involves allowing the spine to have a little lumbar curve. And um, if you organize this so that the pelvis is perhaps a little closer to the roundness of the back behind you, roundness of the upper back, and then rest down through that, it will feel unfamiliar because of the extension. But then you'll get a chance to let go of the hips, and you'll you'll probably feel that how much space that gives the hips. And the next part is to create the length that you're talking about. It's not really a stretch; it just sort of um, it disables the need for the psoas muscle to hold the legs in place. So uh, you know, if your habit is is to hold the legs, then it'll be hard to let go of that tension. So if you take hold of your hand and take hold of the thighs themselves, the thigh bones. Not so much the muscles, although you know, um, obviously you've got your hands around the muscles. And your job is to create space. Your job is to use the arms in a way that pushes the thigh bones, these things, the thigh bones away from, away from you towards the feet. So it's not up towards the knees because that will make you tighten, that will pull on the psoas muscle and the psoas muscle will, will react. It's sending the bones directly away from you in the direction of the feet. And if you can do that and not resist in the hips, which is the tuck under, if you can let that go, what happens is a sort of feeling of lift and extension along the front of the spine. So the, the, the belly needs to be empty, okay? Otherwise, if, if you do it by lifting, you'll be pushing your belly forwards. So the, the emptying of the belly the, the, is a relaxation of the belly. The, um, taking hold of the legs is a relaxation of the psoas muscle uh, because the, then you won't have to use the psoas muscle to keep the legs upright. Even if they fall out to the side slightly, that's fine. As long as you are pushing hard enough with these strong arms to so that the hips don't have to hold tension. Okay, so that's that's a good start. If you if you just uh, everyone joins me now. And just engage with this action. It's a bit hard work for the arms, it, um, but um, your support is the arms. It's like sort of pushing yourself out of a swimming pool or something. You kind of relax the legs behind you. And having taking hold of the legs in this way allows a space between you and the thigh bones so that um, you can experience through breathing. If you let go, there'll be some quite strong sensations of elongation along the front of the spine, and that will include the psoas muscle. Okay. And uh, it's, a, it's a fallacy um, to say that flattening the back um, lengthens the psoas muscle. It, 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 um, it doesn't. It, it works the psoas muscle at the hip end. And it's a fallacy to say lifting the back um, releases the psoas muscle. 
it doesn't. If you're actively lifting the back, you're using your sinus muscle, you're pulling with it to lift the back as part of the action. Okay? Um, strengthening the hips, for example, by lifting with the sinus muscle isn't going to um, make the sinus muscle any more free. Okay, so um, I, I guess I'm just talking to you to fill in time whilst you breathe and relax into supporting your legs away from you. And it's quite a strong feeling, particularly around the base of the spine. If you're, if you're really letting go there, um, the breath can move there. And the sensations will be as they are. Um, but I think we can tell the difference between um, doing something that makes you brace and doing something that you can let go into and breathe. And that creates um, so a space. Now this is this is this freedom in the hips, which is more to do with the space inside the pelvis, and the ability to let go of holding around the hips is important for um, things like lotus. We're not going to do lotus right now. What we're going to do is we're going to put a an ankle on a thigh, okay, and we're going to take it into a twist because this this will be um, just as appropriate for. Um, the, the, de the delicate, okay? So the twist is going to be towards, uh, away from the lotus leg, and there's a sense of using the touch between the legs, the ankle on the thigh, to feel some support, so you engage actively in that direction. And if as you go, uh, you have to activate the standing foot as well, so you roll over the edge so it doesn't uh, pull on your back, um, these are all details that make it more pleasant. Um, if you don't do those things, it will just feel a bit heavy in the body. Um, but as, as you go, I want you to try and sustain the space between the thigh bone and the body. So um, when, the, when the lotus leg foot touches the ground, still firmly touching the other thigh, then you sort of push it away from you. Um, to create space, not to not to cause a reaction, not to cause a reaction, but to create a release of tension between the thigh bone and the rest of you, and also development of space within the core of the body away from that. And if you can be with that for a few moments, breathing. And the, the, the breath uh, generally, it, it's good to feel it in the back of the body. Um, that that's that sort of indicates that um, um, that you're not sort of holding tension in the spine to hold a shape. So if you can feel the breath sort of widening in the back of the body, it also invites space within the front of the body, and the and the release of the breath becomes more of a core support action. And it's actually the emptying of the breath away from the action in the hip that gives you the space in the hip. So if you feel something strong going on in the middle, that's kind of useful. The, the, the thing that's going on in the middle is your core support. If you, if you get that to be involved with pressing into the ground, um, then you don't need to externally support that leg away from you. You, you stay with that space in the hip. Okay, I'm, I'm running out of time, so we'll have to sort of take as red the other side. Okay, so contact, take it over to the other side and then support the thigh away from you. <sighs> Breathe and release. I, I'm gonna try running over if, this, if that's okay. I'll, I'll see, hopefully the Be Live team will let me continue. Um, there's an embrace of the earth that helps you find, support that spaciousness away from the leg so that it, you don't, it's not required to push the arm, you, uh, push the leg away with the arm, but uh, it's a simple thing to support that space. So it's a good thing to do. So you can relax and breathe. And with the release of the breath, the emptying away from that will give you the space that you're looking for in the head. Okay. And what was, um, Louisa was asking how to take that into um, uh, seated half lotus um, using the feet. Okay. Well, um, let's see. Okay, well, the, the, the feet are the thing that lead the movement, really. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're still lying, if you were lying on your back still, and those, if you want to um, continue to lie on your back, you may. Um, if you're lying on your back still, the, the, the 
if you were to cross the leg, that would be led by the foot, and the foot would be moving away from you. Um, if you if you wanted to do it in a way that left you with space in the hip, if you were bringing the leg into half lotus, it would be it would be the foot, sort of as as if it was picking something up, you know, like picking up a picking a daisy and and sort of bringing it to your face. That feeling, uh, together with a widening away from the action, widening back through the thigh, um, it's, it's just the action of sort of picking something up and then having a look at it, um, would engage with the external rotator muscles on the outside of the hip. Um, so if you want to bring your leg into half lotus, the worst thing you can do, um, and you know this, Cindy, um, no, sorry, Louisa. Uh, Louisa and Cindy, um, uh, they sort of work together in, on my course. Sorry. So sorry I got your name mixed up with Cindy's, but... Um, um, uh, that, that's saying I'm pretty much done. I'm, I'm going to just finish this thought. Um, yes, the worst way to bring a leg into a position, the worst way to bring a limb into a position is to kind of grab hold of it like it's something dead and, and sort of pull it there. Pull it there like it, like it needs, you know, um, like it's a dead thing. So it's a kind of worst way of doing it because it's sort of... Um, well, it treats it like a separate part of yourself. If you want to find function in a limb... Um, so if I, if I want to bring, if I want to bring this foot close to me, if that's difficult, it's because of the way I bring it close to me, it'll be my hip flexors that do it. So the same thing, if you create the space, if you create a distance um, that allows you to have space between the thigh bone and you, and you get involved with that, with the breathing gear, with the smiling gear in here, and then it's the foot, it's the foot engaging, like it's, like it's picking something up, like it's, you can't see it, but it, like it's grabbing hold of something and bringing it towards you. Um, it's the foot engaging that gets you to work through the external rotation of the hips that brings you brings the foot closer to the spine without um, you jamming up all this space at the front. And so when the foot is drawing into you, you, you do it with your whole body and it brings the spine closer to the action at the same time. When you get there, you relax. You relax outwards into your touch. And then the other side, okay, so you, you turn away from it so that you can create space away from it, okay? And you, you allow that space, you breathe, you create space, and then as you release the breath, engaged, it's the foot that engages, and it engages to externally rotate, and as you, grab hold of something and bring it towards you. I'm only lifting it to show you, you don't have to do that. But if you grab hold of something and bring it towards you, the outer hip will be involved with that. And it'll bring the spine, it'll bring the spine closer to the action. I'm exaggerating, but instead of bringing the stuff at the front tight and heavy, it brings the spine close to the action so that you can, so that you can, so that you can, Put the foot in into half lotus. Okay, so uh, makes a meal of sitting, but the the result is you 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 sort of arrive with, um, well, you develop limbs that can do the job of moving themselves. You know, and that's that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to become free and mobile. Um, uh, you know, if if you have to move your legs with your arms, then that, that's like it's like not being able to. Cross your arms like this, you know. So, so, so we have to practice working out ways of creating the conditions that allow us to, to, um, you know, move functionally. I'm going to cheat a little. Okay. Maybe I can do that. Again. No, I can't. Not quite. Okay. <clears throat> Way over time. So I better go now. Um, uh, thank you for the questions. Thank. Um, I, I liked um, offering the um, um, the thing around um, te teaching gentle yoga for um, for the slightly infirm because uh, that's where the answer is anyway. Uh, you don't have to be infirm to do good yoga. Uh, being infirm means that you have to do good yoga, and good yoga involves changing your ideas around doing stuff to the body and starting to listen to. Um, that which will help it release into function. That's what we're trying to do.
So anyway, uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope that was useful. Do pass it on if you can. Do share it around. Um, like I said, I'm trying to spread the word here. And uh, it works much better if other people do that for me. So if you found some value, um, pass it on, share it around, and uh, I will see you next week, same time. I'm Mark J. Acquaviva of the Acquaviva School of Yoga, um, signing off. I'll see you same time next week. Namaste.